Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome. Coming to Not Quite Live, One Take Studios, where today we're talking about models and patterns in plain geometry. Not plain as in plain old boring, but plain as in a flat surface plane. In other words, two-dimensional flat shapes. All right, nothing three-dimensional, at least not today. And so models and patterns, well, this is how all of math works, really and truly. All right, people have been studying different things, in this case shapes, and saying, you know what? Every time I have a circle, this happens. Every time I have a triangle, this happens. And what this does is because we can see all of these consistent relationships within our shapes, we can make formulas to go with them. And that way, every time somebody comes across a shape, they don't have to reinvent the wheel and come up with the formulas themselves. They already exist, and we can just use those relationships. All right, so a quick review of some things here then and how they might be applied. Uh, let's start with perimeter, shall we? Perimeter is distance around. Circumference is distance around. Wait a minute. How is it possible that perimeter and circumference are both distance around? Well, okay. This happens to usually be for a circle. Circle. What is this for? Everything else. <laughs> We call it perimeter when you've got corners oftentimes and, and sides, specific sides, but if it is a circle, then we call it circumference instead of calling it perimeter. Sometimes I just want to call it perimeter anyways because I think that I can. All right, so let's see here then. Um, if distance around is for things with sides, what are we going to do? Well, the entire game plan here is just going to be to add up the sides. If I add all the sides together, I will know my distance all the way around. I will have my perimeter. Sadly, not quite that easy. For circumference, uh, your best case scenario, if you were thinking of something linear like that, is you'd almost have to have like a string laid out around your circle, and then you could pull the string straight to measure it. Well, in case you don't have a string, what else might you do? Well, how about this? Circumference equals 2 times pi times r. 2 times pi. So this is our formula for circumference. Not to be confused with area, even though it has some very similar components to it, but... Um, some of you are saying, hey, isn't there another formula? Yes, yes, yes. All right, so think about what you know about circles. R is radius. If I have two radii, radii is the plural for radius, two radii is the same as one diameter. So you could also use pi times diameter, and that's the same thing as having two pi r, depending on what information you're given. But both of those will give us the distance around a circle. All right, so how might we use something like this? Here's a lovely application. Quite frankly, people don't usually find just perimeters and circumferences for the fun of it. They usually want to do something. And if you've ever tried to do anything, especially around your house, oh my gosh, you run stuff like this all the time and you don't think, hey, I'm going to do math now. You're just like, dude, I want to buy a fence. Do I have enough money or not? Quite frankly, that's sort of me. I, I need to put up a fence this summer. I don't know if I have enough money or not. But my yard is not this big and I'm not going to use vinyl because vinyl's too expensive. I looked it up. So, I have a rectangular lot, hypothetically, that measures 60 by 70 feet, and it's going to be fenced with vinyl. If vinyl fencing costs $17.85 per square foot, how much will it cost to fence in the lot? Now, you could make this more complicated. You could talk about posts and gates and everything else, but let's just, just do straight math here for a second, just to get a feel for what this could look like. We're going to start with perimeter, because it makes sense to start with perimeter. Oftentimes, we use the capital letter P for perimeter. Um, it's a rectangle, so let me think rectangle for a second. Rectangle. Okay, so something like this, drawn to scale. Nope. Do I care? Nope. It's 60 on one side, it's 70 on the other side. Well, and because it's a rectangle, that means the opposite sides at the same length. So if I'm going to add up all my sides together, that means that I've got two sides with a length of 60. I'm going to combine that with two sides with a length of 70 for a grand total of, what do we get here? Borrowing my trusty calculator at the moment, 2 times 60 plus 2 times 70, survey says, 260. Now what is this? This is not my money, I am not done. This is 260 feet. It is a linear measurement, it is not squared. Nothing here is squared, this is not area. This is just saying, in a line, if I laid out 260 feet, it would go all the way around this thing. All right, well, great. If that's 260 feet, now let's pull in the money aspect. Do I have enough money for this fence? Well, let's find out. So we're talking, okay, if I have 260 and every single one of those 260 feet is going to cost me 1785, let's just multiply, shall we? 
Let's see if you've got enough money. So 260 times $17.85. That is going to be, oh yikes, that's an expensive fence. I mean, it's a big yard too, but that's an expensive fence. So $4,641 grand total. So oftentimes if we're talking perimeter, we're not just talking independent, we're talking about using it for something, having some sort of application. In this case, to see how much this would cost. And I'm not going to be paying for this anytime soon, because that's a lot of money. So, all right, what else do we have? So if this is our, our linear type of measurements, all right, so this is my one-dimensional measurements on my plane. What about my two-dimensional measurements on my plane? That's area, ladies and gentlemen, all right? So perimeter, circumference right here. These guys, these are one-dimensional, 1D. And then everything here for area, these guys here are all 2D, two-dimensional. So, formulas that you do know. Ooh, let me cover that one. You didn't see it, did you? Haha. -ha. All right. So, things that we know. Circumference, we said was going to be 2 pi r. Area for a circle. Capital A for area. Capital C up here was for circumference. Pi r squared, 2 pi r. Please notice they have the same components, but they're definitely arranged differently. Doing 2 times r is not the same thing as squaring the r. And since this is area, units are squared. We're bound to see squares every once in a while. A rectangle is just going to be area is length times width. Uh, you can call it base times height if you want. Same thing. Um, quite frankly, a square is a rectangle, so you could do length times width or base times height on that one. Or you could say because the square the sides are the same length, that means side squared, side times itself. And everybody's favorite triangle formula for area is one half base times height. The problem with that would be is that most people think that Area is always one half base times height for triangles, and that's actually not always super helpful because to do this, your base and your height of your triangle have to be set at a right angle to each other. They may or may not be sides of the triangle, but the base and the height must be connected by a right angle in order to use this formula. I don't always have this information. Wouldn't it be nice if there was another formula that's maybe a little bit more flexible, possibly maybe, like this one right here. All right, I'm going to fess up right now. I'm a little confused. I've seen books call this Hero's Formula, and I've seen books call this Huron's Formula. So maybe there's a dude named Huron that thought he was a hero. I don't know. I'm just going to go with both in case whatever textbook you read happens to have one of the two. This is another formula for area of a triangle, and it looks something like this. Oh, that's fun, isn't it? All right, so brand new formula, area of a triangle right here. Capital A for area equals the square root of, what is that? That's an S. So the square root of S times S minus A times S minus B times S minus C. What the heck is S? Well, S has its own little mini formula. That's A plus B plus C divided by 2, where A, B, and C are the sides. So first thing I want to say is base and height here had to be connected by a right angle. This says, I don't know if I've got a right angle or not, and I don't care. If I know what all three side lengths are, I can find the area. That's what makes this formula kind of handy, because all I need are the side lengths, and I don't have to have any sort of special relationship between those side lengths. <sighs> Hold on. A plus B plus C. So we just added up the sides. What do we call when we add the sides? Oh yeah, that was perimeter. But then we cut this in half. So this is like taking the perimeter and cutting it in half. If only where there was a prefix that meant half, like semi. Oh, oh, this actually makes sense then. Ladies and gentlemen, S stands for semi-perimeter. It is half of the perimeter. S is semi-perimeter, half the perimeter. Okay, fun stuff, good stuff here. One more example for you, I promise, just one more. Actually, I don't need that. Okay. Okay, slide this, slide this. Can I do this? Oh, that's lovely. Just like that. There we go. I'll set this guy here. Okay. So, application. You're making a triangular sail for a sailboat. I don't know. You could have a sailboat. I don't have one, but that's okay. The dimensions for the sail need to be 12 by 20 by 27 feet. Is this a right triangle? I don't know. Do I have the base and the height? Uh, maybe. Probably not. How many square feet of material do you need? I need area. Square feet is area. Hands down, all the time. So if I need to know how much material for this sail, I need the area of this, and since I have all three sides, this is a logical choice. So we should find the semi-perimeter. Again, S is semi-perimeter. That means that we are going to add up our side lengths, which is going to be 12 plus 20 plus 27. And because it's a semi-perimeter, or half the perimeter, we will cut that in half. 
So what do we get as a result there? We're talking 12 plus 20 plus 27, dividing that in half. All right, so we have a semi-perimeter of 29.5. Ew. But I guess that'll work, right? Sure, why not? That'll work. So 12, 20, 27, just double checking my numbers, making sure we're good here. That should be okay. All right, so now I am all set to find my area. Strange but true. I'm going to write this out even though it's really annoying just because I want to make sure that you don't miss anything. Uh, please note that this formula starts with S under the radical, so you actually have to include the 29.5 and don't just jump to the parentheses. But then we are going to do times 29.5 minus 12 which is one of our sides, times 29.5 minus 20, which is one of our sides, and then times 29.5, where'd it go, there it is, and minus 27, which is one of our sides. So, all right, let's make this happen. 29 and a half times parentheses 29 and a half minus 12. Could I do some of this math in my head? Probably, but I'm tired and I might mess it up right now. So I'm just going to go with my calculator. Minus 20 for the second one. Nope, nope, nope. See, like I said, I'm tired. And then times opening 29.5 minus 27. All right, making sure I read this correctly. Minus 12, minus 20, minus 27. We'll get the multiplication in there. All right, there we go. This means that we've got an area of 110, 110 point, I'm going to call it 73, and this is square feet. All right, square feet literally means that we are saying that if we were to divide this, this whole territory, this whole area up into tiny squares, there would be 110 squares, well, almost 111 squares, and they actually wouldn't be that tiny because they would each be one foot by one foot. That's how many squares we could literally fit into this sale. All right, but that's it. So that's how much fabric we would need to get the job done. Okay, so what are we talking about with this? Geometry is useful for all kinds of stuff, especially around the house. If you're not going to do anything else with math, there's a really good chance you're going to end up using some of this stuff, perhaps. Maybe not this formula, because you might forget it. But a lot of the others you could end up using in context. So it comes down to figure out which formula is appropriate and use it in your time of need. <laughs> all right, have fun.